Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to go to the post rendering process, so like adding motion blur and color correction on all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get into After Effects. So this is a different program. This is, I highly suggest you get this because this is the perfect program to do post editing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and double tap here and this will give us the option to import our animation. So I saved my animation in the animation folder here. So if I double tap on this, you can see I got the entire JPEG sequence here. And if we double tap on the first JPEG, uh, JPEG image, it'll automatically import the entire sequence. So let's do that. And now we got the entire sequence in. And if you want to change the frame rate, like say you animate, uh, you animated at 24 FPS, you rendered it out at 24, you can go ahead and do that and change it here. So I'm going to leave it at 30 because I rendered it at 30. So let's go ahead and click and drag this into our comp composition project thingy. I don't know what it's called. And it'll uh, automatically create a composition. So now we have the entire scene. If you want to, if you want to play it through it, you just hit the space bar and it'll rend render it out with your RAM and you can play out the video. So depending on how much RAM you have, or you have a different amount of green area you can work with. So I have 16 gigs, so it should be fine for the entire animation. And now we can go ahead and start adding effects to it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add an adjustment layer. So why I'm doing this and not just adding it to this layer, all the effects, is because adjustment layer, it, no matter how many things you have, so like say we duplicate this three times, and we like, have a uh, different scene set up like this. This is the timeline, by the way. If you don't get, if you don't, you guys don't know. No matter how many times you duplicate it, the adjustment level will always take into consideration everything below it. So it'll always um, add the effects to everything below it. For example, if I add a motion blur, so let's add a motion blur to it. It's a pixel. So if you type pixel here, we can get the motion blur. And if you drag it on top, the uh, adjustment layer is right on top. So if you drag it there, it'll add, the, add it to the adjustment layer. So now we have the shutter angle and everything, and if I move to a point where there's movement, you can see the motion blur adds this really cool blurish effect when there's motion, and it makes the animations look really smooth and, and nice. I really love my motion blur, so I add it to every animation. And as you can see, it's added to all three of these, um, these layers. So yeah, that's why I need to make adjustment layer. If you're working with many layers, you would have um, an adjustment layer. Okay, so the only issue with motion blur is it creates this distortion effect when the camera changes angles. So to fix that, we need to add some keyframes. So the way keyframing works in uh, After Effects is a little different. So let's go ahead and open our adjustment layer here and effects, and there we go, pixel motion blur. We can go ahead, we can also use the effects over here. So if I click here, it's gonna add a keyframe. So shutter angle 180 degrees, uh, whatever it's called. And then if we if we can, uh, actually let's, let's make a keyframe here as well. So let's just do 180, 180, there we go. So this one we wanted at zero. So this frame right here, because it's distorting, right? From the camera change angle and then can move up a little bit and then uh, change this to zero again. Because actually it moves here and then put zero. I don't know how to add a keyframe using shortcut keys and then move up a little and then we can add this to make this back to 180 and I'll resume the the motion blur that we saw before. So as you can see, it's 180 and then if I move here, it changes to zero and then here it's zero as well, so it doesn't have that motion blur. So that's how I fix that. Okay, so the next thing is adding color correction. So what I like to use is curves. So if I search curves here, you just drag and drop it, and then you get the curves, right? So if I move this up, you can increase the brightness. If you move this side, it's gonna increase the contrast a little. Um, so it's all up to you to mess around here and get the effect you want. Uh, I would suggest going into Google and searching the charts to say to see what type of effect you get depending on which color you get. So I believe like yellow is happy and pink is like um, mysterious or something. I don't know, but yeah, I suggest you check that out. And yeah, so I'm gonna give a uh, a reddish effect because I like reddish effects. <laughs> If you see, my animations have a little bit of reddish effects. Anyway, so I'm happy with that. So now let's go ahead and add uh, hue and saturation. So these are all the color correction tools that I use. Um, so I increase the hue a little and maybe decrease the bright and actually keep that as it is. And then add the final thing, I think. Uh, contrast, yeah, final thing for me is contrast and brightness. Just grab that in. And then I increase the contrast a little bit like so, and then the brightness a little bit. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and go under the color correction tab or whatever, and you can find 
various different uh, types of color correction. You can even just look in the effects and presets and just have a look at all the effects you can do in your animations. And yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to change your aspect ratio. So there are many ways of doing this. I'm gonna show you two ways. So layer, new, solid, and let's make it black and then press okay. And then we can go into our effects and presets and search jaw, so uh, J-A-W. And then put it onto our black, um, layer and then we can move the completion and then the change the height to zero and then we can kind of change our aspect ratio but the only thing is it gives it in percent so you just have to kind of know your, your percents to get the perfect amount you want so I normally set it at like 75 percent or if I'm doing my gladiator animation which I am trying to work on uh, I set it at around 60 I guess and then yeah depending on what you want you go ahead and do that so the other way of doing it is we go into project and we double, uh, let's get rid of our black layer, and um, let's import another file, and I'm gonna put this download in the description, this file, um, so it's basically a PNG, so if I drag and drop it here onto the top layer, it'll come above the um, adjustment layer, and I, if I hold shift and I snap this onto the edge, this is a 75% um, sort of, uh, it gives that aspect ratio and stuff. So yeah, this is why I rendered out the full image instead of rendering out just this part. So if I if I select the um, the rendering, we can actually move this around like so and position where we want the camera to be. Um, so we can even add camera shakes if we scale this up like so and hold shift. And then you can uh, keyframe camera effects. So if I say go to where it falls, you can go to transform and hit the record uh, button for for a position and then we can like move this say down a little up and then move this like this way and you can even rotate it and it'll give that small camera shake and you can render this through keep in mind the more effects you have it's gonna be longer to render out the yeah animation and yeah okay so now we're gonna go ahead and add some audio so double tap here to import our audio and then we can go and find whatever we want so I'm gonna use a this 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 audio clip has no uh, copyright so I'm gonna just load that in and put this in and if we hit play you can hear the music uh, I hope it's on and yeah okay so now let's go ahead and add one more thing which is when he falls we want that sound effect so keep in mind you can download sound if sound effects online and stuff and non copyright music you can also down download on, uh, online and yeah, so let's add a Minecraft sound effect. Uh, damage maybe, step, step. And let's get a, a wood step. So now if you put this here, and let's say over here, because now if I hit play, you can hear that wooden sound effect has been added. Uh, I would suggest doing this in Premiere because that's a more user-friendly way of um, editing audio and stuff. The next thing I want to show you is adding effects. So there's this thing called the Flash Effects, so if I Im import this, Flash Effects Pack, which is like a cartoonish effects pack, you can add so many various things like blood effects and smoke effects and stuff. So let's go ahead and add a smoke explosion type of effect. So let's load that in. So there are so many effects, so make sure you just check that out. And yeah, as you can see, there's like a, a smoke and you can scale it down. You can color correct it. You can do whatever you want to it. You can blur it out. You can, yeah, so it's up to you what you, you want to do with it. So that, keep in mind, you have all these options of adding effects and stuff. Okay, so say your clip isn't big enough. You just right click your composition here, uh, animation composition settings, and then uh, change the duration to say like whatever you want, so 10, 10 seconds and then you can just increase the duration. But for now, I'm just gonna click this here and just put this onto here and right click and trim to comp to work area. And this is what's gonna render out in your final animation. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start rendering the animation. So let's go ahead and make sure this is all on the effects and then we click on file and export and add to render queue like so. And then we wanna save it on our desktop or something and name it tutorial and save. And then we click on lossless, which is where you can adjust the settings. So I have it set at lossless, which means there's no um, loss of quality. And that'll take the longest to render out. Format is at AVI. 
Uh, I don't use QuickTime. I, I don't know, AVI seems to be the only format, not MP4. You can always convert it in Handbrake or whatever, which is this this thing here. here. I'll put a link in the description for this. It's a, it's a converter and it also lowers the, it compresses your file uh, really small so you can upload it to YouTube really easily. So if the file is big, always use Handbrake. And then audio will automatically output. And yeah, so we can press OK. And now we can hit the render. So now we can go ahead and load it up. So tutorial, and we got the entire animation uh, with all the effects and everything. So yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So now I've covered almost everything that is to basic Minecraft animations and stuff. So you're all set to start animating and everything. Um, and keep in mind now, from now on, tutorials will be a little more random. So I, I structured this tutorial series from 1 to 14, part 14. And now from now it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a random tutorial because, I mean, it's, I can't really structure it. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any suggestions for tutorials, just leave them down below because that's what I'm going to use to make the next lineup of tutorials. Um, so it's not going to be as frequent as this, this, these past uh, tutorials because uh, this was already pre-made and scheduled and everything. So the next lineup of tutorials I'm just going to make on the fly and just, just uh, upload them and stuff. So yeah. So thanks for watching and stay tuned and see you in the next tutorial.